Hi, you're tuned in for the Power and Energy News Channel, ESI Africa. For this episode, I am speaking with Sabine Adal Omo, who is the CEO for Sub Saharan Africa at Siemens. Welcome to the studio. Thank you, Nicolette. Nice to be here. So, here at Enet Africa, we are talking a lot about collaboration and the just energy transition. And I believe that you were a part of the keynote session yesterday. So, let's start a little bit about what were the highlight points that came out of that. Well, if, if I think about once, is uh, definitely how you can repurpose current existing assets. Mm -hmm. um, because when you talk about transition within the African context and capital within the African context, we do know that money is not endless available. So we need to be wise also on how to use um, the, the assets we have and where we spend the, the funds on. The other part is, is definitely also the, the investment into renewable energies. Mm -hmm. Um, which can help also to stabilize grids, in particular in South Africa, when we, we look at um, load shedding, which we unfortunately still had in particular in, in May, quite a number of days, uh, renewable energies would have helped if they would have been in a, in a bigger number online uh, to overcome that, that situation. And, and there is clearly a need also by, by ESCOM to get urgent between 4,000 and 6,000 megawatt additional capacity onto the grid in any way or form. And, and that climate change is key to all of this what we do. So, um, and I think from uh, companies which are active in the market, but also society, we need to you know, make a plan on how we can actively support the goal or the ambition set at COP15 in Paris of the 1.5 degrees mm -hmm. capture on earth warming comparing in comparison to, to pre-industrial times. Right. There's been a lot of talk um, at the, the keynote session about uh, uh, decommissioning of the coal power fleet uh, and that Andre de Reyes said it's, it's not something that we need to be afraid of, mm -hmm. uh, there is a plan in place. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of focus on generation and moving the uh, generation fleet to being greener, more climate friendly. But uh, Let's talk a bit about, uh, down the line, transmission distribution. How has that been impacted? Well, currently, I mean, if, if you think about South Africa and if you stay with South Africa for a moment, um, you have, at this point in time, all our assets which generate capacity, so 80% mm -hmm. are somehow in the north. Um, but the renewable assets are all and the, the sources of renewable energy are very much in the south. So the jobs are all in the north. And in the south, there is very little. The grid, which we have in South Africa, is also very much depending on that we have large power stations which transmit from the north electricity into the grid. So while in the south, where new assets are being uh, explored by IPPs and the likes, uh, these kind of investments have to be done. Um, so what also comes with it is that if you have um, a re more renewable dependent grid in the future, um, you will have also higher fluctuations because obviously sun and wind are in different um, availabilities feeding into the grid. So you need to manage this fluctuation as well as a number of assets. And in the past, you, you will know if you look at the financial statements of, of ESCOM, for instance, not a lot of investment has been done into grid update, but also connecting these assets and then also managing these assets because what you will have is once you go more green you will need a much more digitalized grid what means you also need to have your um, backbone on the IT side being enabled to ensure that you are protected against, for instance, cyber security. Because what you don't want is you, you know, decentralize your grid and uh, you basically make it an open platform for any hacker to come in and you have load shedding because um, we, 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 we can't you know, connect to our assets and, and have basically a shutdown system. So these things are definitely of importance and um, very important to make sure that South Africa is able to uh, connect uh, to a green future.
Right. Uh, talking about a, a green future and uh, future-proofing the grid, uh, there are a lot of solutions out there, very smart solutions. So let's talk a little bit about that and uh, how that's been implemented and how that is also then uh, uh, helping with this transition that we are going through. Yeah, well, if, if you think about I mean, one, one part is, is obviously you need to have a kind of a bankable project, yeah? even if you have generation you need to make sure that you have paying customers which are then you know helping to pay down the debt on the loan you have taken and so uh, specifically around energy consumption and the metering thereof so meter data management will become much more important because what we are seeing is and and in in africa we don't have that yet to the extent in South Africa on more like an industrial base, but you will see that more and more people are thinking about to have their own electricity source um, on their rooftop maybe when they want to buy an electrical car as you know many of the car manufacturers are currently offering that also into the market and we have here one from uh, Tesla in, in at the exhibition. So once you have this, it only makes sense to use uh, renewable energy to power this car. So you might have people which want to feed excess electricity as well into the grid. So you see this kind of shift of from being a consumer, we call it then to the prosumer. But it was this kind of consuming and supplying, you have um, as well, or you need to have the ability in the municipality or in ESCOM to manage the mon monetary flow around it so that you know the investment proposition for any of, of these kind of feed-ins are justified and and there where often if you look at African utilities where they fall very short yeah mm -hmm. so you have you have a situation by which revenue collections are not happened um, because it's mainly somebody sits in accounts payable and issues a paper statement which is then going to send to somebody which they have to then pay so I think they are particular around collection of revenue and making a project bankable through all the value chain there there's a lot of digital technology available and we have implemented actually during COVID in, in Ghana uh, a project like that where they have electrified um, and digitalized their, their collection system. Um, but what is I think most important is when you look beyond the, the collection of, of the meter data ring, mm -hmm. you also need to make sure that your distribution system as well as your transmission system is protected and integrated. Mm -hmm. So there are quite a number of opportunities um, which are out technology-wise. Right, that's perfect. Uh, just one last question and uh, that is around what can we uh, expect from Siemens uh, for the rest of this year? Well, I mean, obviously, um, renewable energy is part of uh, what we participate in. So Siemens has their own ESG targets and our, in that part we have as well made a climate commitment to be net zero by 2030. So all our initiatives at our own facilities are going to be green. We, by the way, on our main campus in Midrand in Johannesburg, we are already fully independent of uh, the ESCOM supply of the grid. So we provide our own electricity also for our fleet of e vehicles. <laughs> But uh, what we obviously want to see over, over the next uh, year, specifically with more renewable energy coming in, and also the shift in Europe um, from being carbon dependent on a few countries to maybe a much more a renewable uh, technology being applied to create or to release that dependency on, on a few sources. We do see that there will be a lot of innovation coming forward. We want to be part of that innovation with our technology, specifically to decentralize, decarbonize, and then digitalize the grid and the applications, because uh, I think there is a lot of um, education and information mm -hmm. that is going to happen into the markets, uh, particular in Africa, on what actually the changing demands are for the future, because what we also know is electricity 
as we consume it today will not be the same electricity in the future because you will have digitalization which requires data centers which require energy yeah? Yeah. so most probably energy consumption is is going much higher and we would like over the next year share really our digital journey uh, which we can offer to our clients but also to society and yeah as you spoke about in the beginning the just energy transition it's not only bringing technology in but also taking people with educating people in the context of digital skills but also skills for the just energy transition and hopefully cooperating with many of our customers to maximize the current infrastructure in South Africa. The very good point that we are ending this conversation on and that is we are taking the consumer with us on this journey. Thank you so much for spending time with me Sabine. Thank you Nicolette, it was nice meeting you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Like, share and subscribe to ESI Africa for more content like this.